Good morning, everyone. My name is Sivani and I am from BLLB third year. We are all gathered here today to mark the event of World Intellectual Property Rights Day. And the theme of 2024 IPR Day is Intellectual Property Rights and Sustainable Developmental Goals. Building our common future with innovation and creativity. Knowledge should not be stolen. It should be preserved and shared by giving rightful credits to the owner for the effort in bringing out the knowledge. Basing on this principle, IP has evolved. It's my privilege to invite our university authorities, Professor D. Bharati Ma'am, Vice Chancellor, Professor Yen Rajni Ma'am, Registrar of Sri Padmavati Mahila Vishwavidyale, and Professor C. Vani Ma'am, Dean, School of Social Sciences, to grace this occasion. It's my honor to invite our Department Fraternity, Dr. S. Madhuri Paradesi Ma'am, Head, Department of Law and IPR Coordinator, IIC. Professor T. Sita Kumari Ma'am and Dr. K. Sunita Ma'am, Dr. G. Indira Pradeshni Ma'am, Associate Assistant Professors, Department of Law, to grace this occasion today. My heartfelt welcome to all other academicians, research scholars and students of all other disciplines. To give more insightful knowledge on the subject of patent research, we are graced with the presence of our guest speaker of today's event, Ms. Kalpana Gardma. Now, I request Kiran Mai to introduce our guest speaker to all our students. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kiran Mai from BAL Auditorium. I'm here to introduce our guest speaker. I am here to introduce our guest speaker of today's session, Kalpana Gharna. Ma'am is an alumni of IIT Karakur and IP attorney with almost 12 years of proficiency in merging legal and technical law. Ma'am has also worked with various reputed companies in India as their IP and legal counsel. With the embarking experience, she started a firm in 2022 with the function of resolving intricate legal disputes. Ma'am also has experience in the realm of intellectual property laws, contracts, media and entertainment laws, and policy initiatives. As a part of her interest in teaching, she is also engaged in providing legal training to the students. And one of the faculty for the certification program for executive law courses by IIM Bodhgaya. Currently, she is holding the offices as president, Maharashtra Startup Ecosystem and Incubation Council. Founder and IP attorney at Umbrella Legal and a registered patent agent. Now I request Kalpana Garg, ma'am, to address this session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. And thank you and the faculty and the students at Padmavati Mahilya Vishwadhyale. And before we start the session, a very happy World Intellectual Property Day to everyone. It's a great day to actually support uh, each other when whoever is practicing in the field of IP, whoever is the stakeholder, whoever is interested in the field, it's a very good day. And the theme also actually resonates uh, with the current paradigm, the way things are going and the way we are, we are talking about motivation in the research field. It's important that we talk about sustainability. So before, without further any wait, let's start with the session. And I would request everyone, if you have any question, just stop me anywhere raise and raise your question or just uh, just you know just say i have a question and start asking because when we learn law from each other there is nobody who can teach you law we learn from each other with experiences with brainstorming so it's a great day for for all of us who want to work in ip or who wants to be a stakeholder in any way possible so let's start the the session uh let me just present me Uh, is my screen visible, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma right. All right. So give me a second. Yes. Yes, okay. So uh, when we are talking about the World IP Day and when we are talking about sustainability goals and the theme uh, of uh, sustainability goals and specifically when we are talking about patents, 
uh, the first thing that comes to mind is why we are talking about sustainability and why we are talking about specifically in the regime of patent law and when we are talking about research. But my my uh, my understanding of this theme is that when we are talking about sustainability, it is not just a particular field or a particular uh, you know, facet of life. When we are talking about sustainability, it's everywhere. And if you see the sustainability goals which have been uh, uploaded by WIPO, they are spanning into 17 dimensions. So if you see these dimensions, they are ranging from healthcare to research, innovation, climate. And if you click on any of those goals, if you get time, if you click on any of those goals, they are talking about the way things have to be planned that it cannot be just, you know, for a very short term goal, it has to be a long term goal. And the whole theme, which when we talk about specifically the ninth goal, which is with regards to infrastructure, promotion of, of you know, sustainable uh, innovation and fostering the, you know, industrialization of innovations, important that we talk about sustainability. When we talk about research and when we talk about research in academics, when we talk about research, as such, from the perspective of, you know, people is spending resources, time and effort, the most important IP that comes into picture is a patent. Uh, if you are a designer, let's say you are an automobile designer, then industrial design, which are equivalent of design patents in US come into picture. So very important that why we have to look at patents, why we have to look at utility models or why we have to look at designs is to actually <clears throat> give a kind of incentive to the inventor that if an inventor is doing something apart from money, apart from the, you know, uh, paper publication, there are some rights which should accrue in the name of the inventor. And it is very important that, you know, those rights are recognized. Time and again, we have been talking about, you know, patents. And the way we use patents these days seems like a very common daily discussion. Uh, you will see a lot of advertisements where they will say that the product is either patented or patent pending you will see when you when we open news for example if you go on google news or when you when you go for the tech world news or the startup world news you will see one competitor is or one, one particular company is suing another company and they are saying oh this particular company you know uh, infringe on my patent uh, if you have you know see specifically if you we talk about the smartphones Apple versus Samsung was very common. And these days, if you open news, everybody seems to be fighting on 5G and 6G patents. So this is something which has, you know, taken the corporate world and the, the world wherein the research is funded to, you know, to go to market and create something which, you know, brings revenue to the company. The patent is very synonymously used within the R&D setup. But when we are talking about uh, patents, it's also to actually deal with the way academics and researchers in the university or the institution level should also deal with. We should not be uh, you know, running around that, okay, this is better or that is better. We should be always evaluating our situation or a project from the point of view that, okay, what kind of rights and what kind of incentives it can bring back to the inventor as such, and the person or the entity which is funding that research. So a lot of times when I see uh, these days R&D discussions, basically it now when attorneys get involved or when people like me or people like you in the future will get involved, you will start you know looking at, okay, how to make this, this project a useful and advisable tool for the inventors for the universities and you should not be only focusing on you know publishing your results in the books or scientific journals you should also be looking at patents into accounting because what happens is when you have a patent in your name when you have a ip in your name it brings more than an incentive it brings rights it brings a kind of recognition it brings opportunities in terms of collaboration with the industry it also brings uh, your right to actually stop somebody from using or you know exploiting your research or exploiting your invention which is not authorized by you so this is the beauty where when we are talking about patents as such uh, in terms of uh, an r and d setup before we jump what a patent is or what when a patent is supposed to be done, it is very important when we are talking about academic purposes, then during an R&D project, when should you start considering, okay, that before I, need, I, I you know, start an R&D project, I should go for a patent. 
most of the time uh, my suggestion to you is when you are doing a budgeting for a r&d project it's important to do budgeting for a patent based uh, paradigm also because what happens is while you have taken budgeting for a publication let's say patents are little compared to our compared to our research publication they are little expensive i will say because you will have to hire an attorney and if you have an in house resource good it helps so you will hire an attorney who is going to you know do a research check the draft and then file it and then there will be a prosecution but it's important that first at the time of budgeting in r and d project you take patents budget into consideration once you have a patent budget into consideration one of the thing is that while you are doing research somebody should also check instead of just books and journals the patent database these are available online also some of them are free also for example a free database can be like a google patent database wherein you can do a little research to see the 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 project that you are proposing what exactly has happened i have seen researchers doing this by you know conducting research searches in journals in books in online publications to see what work has been done and what lacuna is there my suggestion is add another layer to it add a patent database as part of the search to see in the patent world what has happened and whether what i am going to do where whether that is already been done in a patent world and if it has not been done somebody saying something yara yara mandi jana yana rakte i request lavanya please mute yourself any question no kalpana please carry on all right all right one second all right so when we are talking about uh, when we are talking about budgeting part i let me just go back to it i was saying add another layer to your your search for an academic project add a patent database also another thing is before you publish it's important that you you evaluate your research evaluate your invention for a patent also we will cover this in very detail what is what and what stage what you are supposed to do but i am giving you a just a glimpse of it whenever you advise somebody or whenever you get involved in the process of somebody coming to you saying that i am planning this project and uh, these are the steps see whether a patent and uh, securing the rights of the academic institution or the or the university is there and that is through patents and industrial designs in india today we are going to cover patents uh patents are specifically for invention industrial design is what a look and feel is so for an industrial design for example i have a bottle handy the shape of this bottle is something which is covered by an industrial design but how you make this bottle is something which is an invention in very simple layman terms so let's start with the the patenting part so when we talk about patents when we say okay something is a patent actually it's one facet of the intellectual property world which actually gives you a negative right in your hand negative right is wherein i can stop for example let's say dr madhuri here has you know as thinking of you know making a product which is covered by my patent what i can do her, do to her is i can tell her that see this is my patent this is my technology and i have all the rights let's say in india so if she wants to do something like this either she has to take permission from me meaning she can take a license or she can just buy the patent from me and if she doesn't want to do it then i can take her to court so patent is a negative right which gives me the right to stop somebody else from making offering to sell or selling a product which is you know counterfeit or which is actually embodying the invention for which the rights have been given to me through a granted patent so uh, as i said it is a negative right also exclusive in nature a patent if granted to kalpana belongs to kalpana only meaning that miss miss madhuri or dr madhuri when she applies for a very similar patent in the future then she will not get the right she will only get the right if she has done some improvement or her invention is significantly different from mine if that is not the case she will not get the patent patent grants you monopoly monopoly meaning that since you have gotten the right you can stop others from exploiting that invention or exploiting that technology 
without taking permission from you. So it is a monopolistic right, negative in nature, also monopolizing in nature. And this right is only given for a period of 20 years. Now, when we talk about other IPs, other IPs, for example, you get the industrial design for 10 years plus five years extension. You get copyright depending on the type of work. You get uh, you get uh, uh, industrial design, as I said, industrial design for 10 plus five. You get a trademark for 10 years. So every kind of IP is different when it comes to term. 20 years is something which is very standard. You get a patent. Uh, for 20 years in India also. If you apply your patent in US also, the term is 20 years. So this is very standard across the world that when you apply your patent and the patent has been granted, the protection is for 20 years. Uh, please ask me any question if you have at any time um, and stop me if you feel that I'm going a little fast. Okay. So when we are talking about patents and when we are talking about territory, like any IP, patents are territorial in nature, meaning that if you are selecting India as your territory to file a patent, then if the patent is granted, you will only get the rights in India only. So if somebody, for example, in the audience, I have Lavanya, if Lavanya exploits her invention in US, but files a patent in India, then if Somebody who copies her invention in US, she cannot send them a legal notice. She cannot take action. So anytime you want to enforce your patent in a particular country, you will have to file that patent in that country. An Indian patent can only be enforced in India. A US patent can only be enforced in US. It is not like this that if you have a patent in India and you want to sue somebody who is based out of US and exploiting your invention in US, you will have to have filed a U.S. invention and have a grant there too. If you don't, you will not be able to uh, take any action against the infringer. Uh, similarly, if a patent is granted in U.S. and somebody copies your patent in India, then you cannot you know, send them a notice saying that I have a patent in U.S. You need to have a valid, subsisting and a granted patent in India for you to enforce your rights. And as I said, that you have up the, the right for 20 years. And once that 20 year period goes away, once that period expires, then the right goes away. Meaning the complete invention or the technology which was a part of that particular patent will come into public domain. And now anybody can exploit, use, and if it was a product, can sell that product into the market. So 20 years you have the protection and after that the protection goes away. Okay, now when we are talking about patents and we are talking about rights, the very obvious question that comes is that while we know that copyright, when we talk about copyright, it is artistic work, literary work, dramatic work and things like that. But when we talk about patents, what it covers? A patent simply covers or gives right to an invention. Now, I cannot say this bottle is my invention and should be given a right. It is not like that. For a patent, for an invention to... Somebody was saying something? Okay. For an invention to become patentable in nature, it has to qualify three or four criteria. And these criteria are arising from the patent law in India. Now, these criteria are also acceptable and to standardize across the world. So if you file a patent in, let's say, US also, these criteria still need to be fulfilled to get a grant there. And similarly in India also. So whenever mm -hmm. you are... Anybody mm -hmm. have any questions? Please continue, Kalpana. There is some, some disturbances. Please continue. All right. So when we are talking about patents and when we are talking about inventions which qualify for a patent, there are certain criteria. The first criteria, which is novelty or the newness of the invention meaning that when you when you intend to file your patent let's say you intend to file your patent on 26th of april 2024 on this day your invention has to be novel in nature meaning it has not been anticipated by any ways uh, by publication by usage by you writing a journal uh, before this date so it should not be known known to public in any 
I will come to novelty and I'll detail it out how novelty works. But I am first right now telling you the criteria of a patentable invention. Next step is inventive step. Inventive step is a little tricky also. And they most of the time when we are arguing in front of the patent office or when you are arguing in the court, most of the time the argument goes towards inventive step. Inventive step is tricky because it says that basis the available prior art, meaning the text or the literature which is available in the public domain, the invention should not be obvious. Meaning, for example, let's say Kalpana made a pencil. Let's say pencil was novel on 26th of April 2024. Now, uh, Lavanya here thinks, okay, on this pencil, there should be uh, a light which, you know, helps me write in the dark. Now, let's say light was already available in the public domain and pencil was invented by Kalpana and she also filed the right. Now, combining the two did not take a flash of genius. Combining the two was something which somebody just put two, two plus two together and said, okay, this is something which is, you know, this is new. But this is obvious because combining the two to, uh, to overcome an issue wherein somebody wants to write in the dark is something which not be deemed as inventive in nature. Again, this is very subject to subject basis. Uh, this is again based on the technology, the kind of literature that we are referring. But this is one of the most obvious uh, rejections that come from the patent office when we are talking about an invention. Third aspect is industrial applicability. Industrial applicability is that your invention should be capable of being used in the industry. You should not be making something which is not capable of being used or exploited. So these are, these are statutory requirements when an invention is reviewed from the scale of being a patentable invention. So novelty, inventive step and industrial applicability. Now we will talk about novelty in greater detail. When I say novelty or the newness of the invention, uh, the statutory definition says that it should not have been anticipated, meaning available. Anticipation means, meaning is it is written somewhere, it is available somewhere. And when you look at it, you feel, oh, it's available. So it should not be available in one document. It should not be used in, the, in any country, not just India. And it should not be available in the world also before the date of filing your application. For example, um, if I file a patent today for let's say um, a light bulb, let's say, and I say light bulbs are not available, let's say in a very poor country. And I say, this is something which is patentable. I will not be, my invention will not be considered a new or a novel patentable invention because the light bulb is available through literature, through usage, through, uh, through you know, documentation in a worldwide basis. When we are talking about, whenever you file or whenever you evaluate an invention, you cannot say, oh, it is not available in India. That is why it is new. No, you the scale has to be a worldwide scale. Meaning whenever you're evaluating, you have to look whether that particular invention or technology Apart from not being available in India, whether it's available in other countries, and if the answer is yes, you don't have novelty. So very important that when you are evaluating novelty of an invention for, for being a patentable invention, you have to look at the worldwide basis, not India. So when we evaluate novelty, what do we do? We look at... Uh, descriptions description meaning documentation whether it is anticipated by an, another patent whether it is anticipated by a paper whether it's anticipated by somebody's blog sorry whether it's some, uh, anticipated by somebody's blog whether it's anticipated by somebody's writing whether it's anticipated by our older books journals now when it comes to usage for example, there was a invent. There was a matter in India in the early 60s where uh, a factory owner had filed a patent application, and the patent office said your your invention is not novel, and they said no, we have not published it anywhere. What they had done was they had been publicly manufacturing the product, and the manufacturing process was available for anybody to see. 
and you know they felt that it is more like a uh, uh, entertainment thing that you know you are showing how the product is being made and after a couple of months they filed the patent so the examiner said since you have already started showing and using the invention in the public domain then you cannot say that my rights you know are still there you have killed your rights by on your own so the first thing is that if you have a patent before using it before you know putting it in a documentation you are supposed to first evaluate from a patent perspective now coming to oral description there are certain things for example we where the documentation might not have been there properly but there is so much oral information or there is so much passing off of information that you understand for example uh, the way uh it's a very bad example to be very honest but let me just take the example of neem we all know that neem uh, is a is a tree or as a plant has a lot of medicinal values now if somebody extracts something from neem and and you know goes for a patent you will say there is so much information available because for neem and you this is also an orally accepted standard also so you will not get a patent for that uh when i say in any other way in any other way there have been instances wherein for example for startup companies uh, the founders have become little uh, i'll say excited and they put what they are making and how they are making and in some designs of their uh, inventions uh, into the public domain through social media or through you know uh, in interview if you have done that you are your worst enemy because you have killed the novelty of your own invention so all of this is actually evaluated before you file a patent so let's say uh, let's say let me just take a name from the audience let's say uh, dr lavanya here uh, dr lavanya comes up with an invention and uh, when she comes up with an invention and let's say she pub she is ready to put the invention into a paper and the paper is let's say ieee journal and they are saying okay 15th may by 15th may you send us the paper with complete documentation complete uh, citations complete references but before publishing the paper in a ieee journal you are supposed to actually file a patent application also because if you do it the other way round you publish the paper first and then you go for a patent your publication will become a hindrance to your own patent so it's very important that you file a patent first to ensure novelty remains preserved and then you publish the paper any questions till now we'll do uh, after your talk kalpana but all right, all right. now coming to inventive step inventive step is as i said when somebody combines a couple of features of of many inventions and says that okay what i have combined is might be novel in nature for example if i combine uh, a makeup kit or a makeup blusher with an umbrella and say that while i i travel in mumbai monsoon my umbrella my makeup blusher keeps on you know uh, ensuring that my makeup is not getting smudged because of the rains makeup smudge and umbrella are two different inventions which are already available and the combination of two might be novel meaning somebody might not have done that earlier but that will be seen not as inventive meaning it will be seen as obvious because those two things are available independently and even after being combined they are still doing their own functions meaning umbrella is still protecting me from the rain and the makeup blusher is still you know trying to enhance my beauty so if that is the case there is no inventive step inventive step comes into picture when the components which have been brought together continue to render the same function which they were doing independently so while you are combining any any couple of invention combining parts of the invention you have to look whether it is doing something which is more technically advanced or no if the answer to the technical advancement is no you will have a problem justifying your inventive step to the examiner okay for an inventive step now let's say uh, let's say somebody from the computer science background uh, it combines two programs or two algorithms and comes up with a third algorithm now he goes to the examiner and the examiner says that okay this is not patentable now the qualification to say no is somebody who has to be a subject matter in that field meaning that somebody who is from the automobile domain cannot say it is 
not inventive the evaluation has to be by somebody who is a subject matter expert or somebody who is skilled in the art so for example when our patents or applications are evaluated at the patent office people who are in same subject matter so when you have a computer science based invention going to the patent office there is a person who is from that background evaluating your patent so this is the criteria otherwise the examination will be challenged now apart from these these three main requirements for a patentable invention to be there there are certain inventions under the indian laws which are not allowed to be patentable irrespective whether they qualify the criteria of being novel being inventive and having industrial applicability uh these actually have been put into the statute to ensure that there is public policy balance meaning that people are not monopolizing things for for their own private interest and random claims are not coming in terms of you know everything is patentable under the umbrella so that is why it has been done that there are certain statutory prohibitions when we talk about certain uh, these prohibitions you must have heard of these pharmaceutical cases wherein uh they have been companies fighting in india saying that we want to patent and we are not allowed patent and the genetic industry is allowed to flourish there is this is the same section we are talking about the same section or you will see a lot of of software industry complaining about india's regime of you know not allowing algorithms or business methods or uh computer programs patentability all of this is stemming from this particular section so we will discuss this section in detail there is another section which is section 4 which allows indian government to put restrictions on the inventions related to atomic energy meaning if you come up with an about different a new isotope and you go for a patentability your invention will be barred by section 4 similarly there are certain defense based um, uh, research or defense based inventions for which the indian government first says okay we need to evaluate first whether the rights need to be given to a private party and after that evaluation if they say that the rights cannot be given to a private party the invention is not granted and it is seemed is seemed as a invention for defense purposes so these are statutory restrictions which are there so let's go one by one to these statutory restrictions so we'll talk in very short detail with regard to these restrictions so uh, for example section 3a within the patent act it says that something which is in every invention is frivolous in nature and which claims something which is contrary to natural laws for example if i make a machine or i claim that i have made a machine which gives 100% output the patent will not be given and the invention will be deemed to be violative of you know uh, section 3a because what happens is it is kind of a right now the understanding of the science that no system can give 100% output so if something is if is going against those understandings that will be considered violative of section 3a similar example is if a machine is giving output without taking any input this will be again violative of section 3a now coming to section 3b section 3b where in uh, you are doing something which is against the public order you are doing something which you know gives us very strong or serious prejudice to the life of humans animals plants or the environment for example you you make a human cloning machine or you create a device which you know helps the the thieves committing burglary if that is the case what you are doing is you are disturbing disturbing the public order or you are going against the public policy of you know um, of of not increasing the crimes but then you will ask me okay how guns are allowed guns are a different case they go into different diff different category not into this one so for example if somebody comes up with an invention wherein uh, let's say they say that this is a machine or a device to actually print counterfeit counterfeit currency notes that will not be patentable under this particular section uh coming to section 3c 3c says that something which is uh, a discovery or something which is a formulation of an abstract theory for example if i discover a gas which is another fuel let's say or another fuel source i cannot you know get a patent on that one 
because that will be our discovery so it has to be if something is simple discovery discovering something which is already existing in nature i will not be granted a patent you want a question right now i can ask a question do you think um something which is existing in nature for example let's say a uh, dr madhuri discovers a new species of bacteria which is existing would she be granted a patent no ma'am why because it's already existing and uh, she would be granted patent if in case there are some improvements or some changes made to the already existing covering it for example you must be seeing a lot of news with new species of a new bird or a new species of a new fish or a or a sea creature is is discovered by somebody what they get is they get a credit to their name that they have discovered this but they don't get any any patent rights as such so credit is something else credit is i am being you know uh, credited which is a my moral right uh, for discovering something but i will not get the right to stop somebody else for working on that or for exploiting that uh now come on coming to for example there was a trend that uh, pharmaceutical industry what they used to do is they will have a patent around the base molecule and what they will do is around the base molecule they will keep changing the side chains they will put ethers they will put alcohol side chains they will put something else and because of some change they will keep on saying that okay this is an advancement this is a new invention and you we should be granted a patent and now what happened in in india because of section 3d they have been restrictions that you cannot keep on monopolizing you cannot keep on ever greening your invention by you know designing around or by putting smaller smaller you know modifications so this has been a lot of pain point for pharmaceutical industries because what they do is at times they keep on you know making these base changes in the base molecule and while the therapeutic efficacy might not change much they keep on reprogramming or they keep on packaging this as a new drug and india for the public policy perspective because if the pharmaceutical companies keep on getting right uh, the the molecule will never come into the public domain and the generic industry will no, never be able to make it so to have that balance in india section 3d is still there they have been multiple talks at the international level to align it with other countries to you know have, you know change the language and to give more rights to the pharmaceutical industry but india has firmly said no uh coming to section 3e section 3 is again very similar to what we are talking about in pharmaceutical industry and specifically in fmcg also so what they do is the admixture meaning uh, if you combine paracetamol with let's say ibuprofen you will have uh, have a painkiller also you will have a antipyretic also but paracetamol is doing its function of doing being an antipyretic proof ibuprofen is doing the function of being a painkiller so if you just combine which is an admixture the patent is not granted because again what you are doing is you are violating the inventive step you are producing nothing new the components in individual capacity are still rendering their own functions so this is something which is not allowed uh now coming to section 3f section 3f also finds a lot of application in the automobile industry wherein uh, when we say the arrangement and rearrangement of the known devices at times and uh, at times in the automobile industry they keep on changing the placement of certain components here and there and when they do that at times the evaluation is done whether we are falling within the uh, the ambit of section 3f because what you are doing is you are simply doing arrangement and rearrangement 
so basically when you whenever you're placing a particular component from one place to another place and changing the location you also have to justify technically that how this particular positioning helps in the overall performance of the vehicle Uh, coming to section H, section H is that if you have come up with a new method for doing agriculture or horticulture, you will never be allowed a patent. But that does not mean tractor. You will be allowed a patent. That is not a method. That is a device. Method is if I uh, come up with a new way to sow seeds into the ground, that will not be allowed a patent. But if I make a tractor which helps me in doing that, that tractor will be given the rights for a patent. So you have to understand that the method is not allowed, but the device is allowed. Uh, coming to section 3i, section 3i is very similar to what we discussed earlier. When it came to the method for agriculture, here the method, here the process for any medicinal, surgical, curative, or prophylactic diagnostic process is not allowed. For example, if I come up with a new way to find out what is my blood sugar level is after I have eaten, that process will not be allowed a patent. But if I make a diagnostic machine or if I make a, uh, make a surgical apparatus through which I'll have to cut lesser to a patient, I'll have to put smaller incision, that surgical instrument will be allowed patent, but not the method per se. Uh, section 3J, Section 3J is very similar to what we discovered or what we discussed. When we are talking about plants and animals in whole as such or their parts, they are not allowed patents. Uh, what they are allowed is if you come up with a new variety of a plant, then there is a different right which is accrued to it, which is a different statute altogether. But you will not get a patent as such on this one. 3K is something which uh, software industries keep on brainstorming on because 3K says that any mathematical business method or a computer program per se or an algorithm is not allowed patentability. Meaning that if you file them, them without taking into consideration, there are certain guidelines around it. And if you file it, you will have rejections at the patent office. So the most of the time you open any software patent in India or, or worldwide, we have collab we have corresponding sections in different statutes in different countries so for example for this one there is section 101 in us there is section 52 in in europe so there are multiple or corresponding uh, rejections or the sections in different countries also wherein a software invention which is just a computer program or just a algorithm is not allowed patentability when we are going for a software patent in India, the requirement is that we have to show that the hardware forms an integral part of the invention. And what the invention is doing is either it is increasing the processing speed, it is decreasing the processing time. But if you say cost of the system is going down or it is a mere automation wherein uh, simply if somebody was doing a risk analysis, let's say, and the risk analysis was, was for 10,000 individuals. Now, Dr. Madhuri, she writes an algorithm. Instead of, you know, Kalpana sitting down manually and doing that risk analysis, which was taking, let's say, three days, now her algorithm leads to analysis within 30 minutes. It will not be allowed patentability because what she has done is she has done an automation. So the requirement under Section 3K also is it should not be a mere automation. It has to increase the system variable meaning system variable have to be affected. Your processing speed has to get affected. Your processing time has to get affected. And it cannot be human versus machine. It has to be machine versus machine. Uh, coming to section 3L. Section 3L is actually a kind of, uh, I'll say, uh, to avoid confusion, to avoid overlaps within these statutes that Anything that falls under a literary work or dramatic, musical, artistic work will never be allowed a patent because all of this falls into the ambit of copyrights. Uh, section 3M is, for example, for your performance or the way you scheme or make a rule. For example, if, if, if Kalpana comes up with a new game or she you know, creates a new way of playing that game, that will not be allowed a patent because this is simply a mental act. Presentation of information. 
डॉक्टर माधुरी क्रिएट्स एंड क्रिएट्स अ कैलेंडर एंड शी कम्स टू मी सेइंग दैट दिस कैलेंडर हैज ऑल द लीव्स अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड मीनिंग दैट इफ यू रेफर टू दिस कैलेंडर यू यू कैन सी ओके ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर डे uh whether us has a holiday europe has a holiday india has a holiday or any asian country has a holiday that will still be considered presentation of information and that will not be allowed a patent uh finally section 30 which is for the integrated circuit for that as i said for a copyright you have artistic work for this one also there is a semiconductor layout design statute under which you are supposed to actually protect your layout this is not protected under a patent uh section 3p is again for traditional knowledge traditional knowledge is which is again by passed from one generation to another for example traditional knowledge is something uh, uh, which we get from our ancestors if you talk about tribal population the way they use certain of the herbs the way the way they use certain of the of the naturally available substances and if somebody simply extract that substance and says that this is patentable that will not be allowed we have the example of let's say turmeric we have the example of neem when we have been using these for the generations and this this particular knowledge has been passed down the generation that will not be allowed very interestingly india government these days since the last 5 years has created something called a traditional knowledge digital library wherein uh these kind of information have been collated and stored because what what was happening was whenever somebody was filing any patent let's say in us or european countries they were not at that time we were fumbling around and we were looking for information so now because of this tkdl an access has been given to foreign examiners also that they can do a search here and see that in indian database something similar like that is available or not it's a very good initiative actually so what happens is it avoids the cases of what ha what happened with turmeric what happened with neem so it's a very good i'll say reservoir of information and specifically of traditional information of knowledge which was getting passed down and at times orally also from one generation to another now we will come to anatomy of a patent um, any questions till now or should i continue all right uh so when we talk about anatomy of a patent uh if you see a patent document if you go on the patent register and if you download a document you will see there are multiple headers under which a patent um, is divided and i am talking about first specification that a specification you will see you will see the title for example if you see this is the title of the invention uh title is something for example when you write a paper you give it a title similarly when you write a patent you have to give it a title that okay my invention uh, is a system and a method to let's say solve risk to you know do risk analysis and in this case for example the the patent i have taken i have changed the some name some addresses i have changed just to you know avoid the the applicant's name to be there on the slide but if you see this on a on a form to like this you will see the details of the applicant the title of the patent uh you will see whether it's a complete specification or a provisional specification i'll explain to it to you later so in a patent you will see title then there will be an abstract an abstract is wherein for example in your paper also you have abstract wherein in a very brief summary you talk about what the invention is about similarly in a patent you will see that then there is a detailed description which talks about what is the background how what is the invention about how the invention works and the legal claims so now if i remember my days when i used to write papers it used to it used to be like i used to write what is the theory how what are the structure structural components uh, what each component does how the system works and what is the output of the system very similarly the patent is kind of similar to a paper in that aspect the only difference is that at the end of the paper of the patent you will see something called claims now claims are legal boundaries basically for example if i say my invention is uh, a device which takes me from place a to place b you will write the same thing in a research paper also but in a patent you will write my device includes four components and these four components are placed at that these particular locations so now if dr madhuri wants to uh, 
uh, you know use my patent or wants to do something she will have to have four different component or she will have to see how those four different component of hers are not you know working in the same way as mine so it is very important when we are talking about patent versus a research paper in a patent you will see something called claims which gives you legal rights and once these claims are granted by the patent office you can stop others from exploiting your technology or invention uh this is how a patent grant certificate looks like the color keeps on changing now it is little orange in color these days and uh, these days you will also see with the new patent amendment that the inventor names are also written this is a new move by the patent office because earlier they were only writing the name of the applicant the date application numbers and uh, rest of the details and the title of the invention but these days are also writing the name of the inventors and there is a provision also that in case the name in some of the application which have been recently granted that if the name of the inventor is not there you can make an application to the patent office so this is something which has been again a welcome move because when the patent certificate gets used to get issued the inventors used to feel that okay their name is not there in any of the documentation and they cannot show that okay our patent is in their name so this is a welcome move by the patent office now come when we talked about patents and when we talked about that you know when you are doing up doing a planning or when you are doing a research budgeting and after that you are supposed to you know have a layer when you you know look for the research work that has been done in a particular field and i recommended that you add a layer and that that additional layer has to be a patent search so when i'm talking about patent search the first question that comes is and you will ask me is where to do a patent search so generally patent search can be done on a free database for example when we talk about free database and as you can see on the screen there are many free databases you will see by post patent scope you will see google patents there is a search tool called free patents online uh, they are uh, different ones also there is european registry which also allows you to do a patent search and if you are just looking for indian patents you can also look at the indian patent website to do a search now when i when it comes to uh, free databases versus paid databases with paid databases the uh, advantage is that the search is uh, more refined there are, are multiple fields to conduct a research uh, bases your keywords the paid database also does a scoring and a rating matrix meaning that it will tell you okay this particular result is a 100% match this particular patent might be 95% match so it gives a kind of a mapping index to you and you basis that you can actually look at the patent also this is an example or uh, this is the one advantage of a paid database for example while we are doing let's say while we are doing transactional exercises or while we are uh, doing due diligence for a company we generally go for a paid databases because what happens is uh free databases are not updated regularly that is one issue another issue is because they have not been programmed to to you know to handle volumes at times what happens is the research the the search results might not be complete let me give you an example i recently saw this myself that while we were doing a transactional exercise uh when we did a search on a free database for a company to see how many patents are there it was only showing five but when we did the search on a paid database it showed us around eight patents the difference was the free database was not taking assignments into picture meaning that particular company had bought three more patents from smaller players but the free database was not able to show that so whenever you are doing exercises where somebody's valuation is being considered or where somebody's um uh, due diligence is being done it is recommended to use a paid database uh also for paid for paid non paid databases to see what kind of work has been done you can also see uh, google scholar ieee and science direct but that is not for patents this is for non patents meaning your publications so these are the places where you can do your patent search but if you are for example looking for non patent related information you can have uh non non patent based database you can have uh, technology blogs you can look at competitor products and publications but when it comes to patents they are free databases like google patents or paid databases like uh questel or orbit for example i as an attorney use orbit 
because it gives refined searches whenever we are working for a client and we are at time we are sure also that the research or the search results are going to be a little more comprehensive when it comes to a comparison with a free database now when it comes to searches uh, there are different different types of patent searches which is done bases the requirement of the client so for example uh, when you are determining whether the invention that you worked on or whether you want to publish is patentable or not you will do a patentability search meaning you will assess that the invention that you want to publish in the future or want to patent in the future is patentable or not so for that you will check do a patentability search where you will determine that the invention is novel and inventive now you in this particular search you will not restrict yourself to a territory it will be a worldwide search so for example if dr madhuri has come up with an invention and kalpana is supposed to do a search her search restriction will will not be a territory based it will be worldwide she will have to look for result for uh, all the inventions or all the documentation that is available worldwide this is patentability search there is something called freedom to operate search which is done to check that if for example let's say abc company is looking to launch a product in india and they say we want to check if we are infringing on let's say somebody's patent at that moment before you launch a product in the market we start with the fto search freedom to operate meaning that if i am launching my product do i have the freedom to maneuver into the market without any risk without the risk of any infringement also at that moment we do something called the fto fto is territorial in nature when your client comes to you and says oh i want to get an fto done you need to ask them what is the territory and ideally as an attorney you are supposed to handle your own practice area meaning for example if you are an indian attorney you are supposed to do fto for india only you are not supposed to do fto for uh, us or europe because you are you don't know how their laws work how the courts have given judgment and how the the interpretation of the law works so as an attorney if you are indian attorney do a indian fto search now when it comes to validity search it is something which is handled at the time of litigation so let's say uh, your client comes to you saying that i have received a notice from xyz company and they are saying that i have infringed upon their patent at that moment one of the defenses would defenses would be to see whether their patent is valid and for that you will do something called a validity search wherein you will check whether they are certain publication certain documentations which are available before their filing date and if that is the case you will file something called a a revocation suit in in the in the courts so this is something which is done when a litigation hits you last and not the least landscape search landscape search these days this is a tool which is deployed by corporates a lot wherein they want to see that in a space if i if i say that in a space of water heaters there is a, a you know circle based space so they want to see what is the white space out of that circle out of that pie what is the area in a particular technology which has not been exploited by anybody else and for that you keep on looking for example if if i talk about water heaters in a water heater people have worked on coil that is a saturated area let's say people have worked on let's say the uh, the the energy consumption that is another area but for example nobody has worked on waterless heater meaning the heater giving you hot water in real time and you don't have to wait so if that is an area where people have not worked this is your white space and this is something a landscape study tells the client that okay this is your white space and you should do research in this particular domain so at that for that a landscape search is done now when i comes to timeline for a patentability search generally an attorney will take 2 weeks for an fto search an attorney is going to take Four to six weeks for a validity search. The same time it's taken, and for a landscape search, around uh, two months is taken. Two to three months to to complete these studies. Uh, now I'm coming to the process of filing a patent to the grant. This is the patent life cycle. Yeah, go ahead.
is there a question here no please continue uh, kalpana some disturbances okay okay now when we talk about uh, indian patent system there are certain aspects of the patent system that we have to understand first is that in india we have something called the first to file system meaning let's say dr madhuri and dr lavanya here let's say both of them let's say they don't belong to the same university they belong to different universities and both of them let's say are working on a, a waterless heater okay and uh, dr madhuri goes first and files the patent while dr lavanya was the first one to actually make something like that but she did not go to the patent office she did not file it okay and she did not publish her findings anywhere and she did not maintain her lab results now what will happen is that dr madhuri will have a claim because she is the first one to file it and uh, since dr lavanya did not maintain any record then she cannot say oh this is something which is already part of the domain or this is something which is already known so it is very important that if you have come up with something and if it is a credible invention as per the the search is done and the evaluation of an attorney then you have to file also it's a very famous case you should read about it with respect to graham bell wherein there has been a lot of speculation and he was the first on the same day there were two inventors there was mr graham bell and there was dr jane who uh, were interested in filing the the patent for the telephone but mr graham bell's attorney reached first and he filed the patent first and he was given the rights and that's why we know that he was the inventor but there has been a case around it wherein um, wherein since the regime at that time was first to file and he got the right but you should read it it's a very interesting case study for first to file paradigm now coming to the second aspect of it when we are talking about unity of invention unity of invention meaning one invention one patent application for example if you have made multiple application multiple uh, inventions you cannot file that into a single patent application if you do that you will get a reply from the patent examiner saying that please divide your invention into multiple inventions and file multiple applications so at times a lot of inventors inventors do this where they will file a single application thinking it's going to save money but if you do that at the stage of examination the examiner will make you divide it oh, excuse me and at that moment you will again be paying the fees so it's not that something which is very uh, very uh, recommended recommended to the uh, inventors if you have more than one invention file multiple applications in india we have something called a pre grant opposition and a post grant opposition meaning once a patent is filed and published in the registry then you can oppose and similarly after the patent has been granted you can you can oppose the patent the post grant opposition is limited for a for a limited period of time and if the time expires then you have to go for revocation of the patent in the court so these are basic paradigms of a patent system in india unity meaning one invention one patent first to file you have to file first to get the rights and we have pre grant and post grant oppositions now the question arises that while we have done the search and we have evaluated that we have a legible and uh, uh, eligible patent application in a patent uh, patentable invention in our hand then the question arise who can file a patent now uh, generally the thumb rule is the inventor who has come up with an invention can file a patent but most of the time when we are talking about inventors and when we are talking about an academic setup inventors are the employees of the academic institution or the university and if that is the case <clears throat> the university who is the assignee of the rights from the inventor can file a patent uh in case of a corporate if the corporate has this particular case then on behalf of the employee employer gets the rights an employer being a corporate company or a llp or or any kind of entity can file a patent in its own name so when we talk about inventors if they are employed they are employers if they are not employed they themselves and if the inventor is dead then their legal representatives can file a patent application okay uh this is a very interesting part which you should hear very clearly 
at times ha it happens is while you have come up with a sorry at, at times what happens is while you have come up with a credible invention and in which you feel through a little research that it has been it is considered patentable but you have certain disclosure requirements let's say uh let's say that um, your company is going into an expo where they want to show the product or you are you have submitted your paper into a competition and they have selected your paper and are saying that you need to present this paper on let's say a particular date or let's say ieee says that we like your paper and we are going to publish your paper in that case from this date the paper will become published in the domain but now what happens is you also want the patent rights so what you are supposed to do is and you don't have the time to let's say draft the patent properly with an attorney and everything at that moment what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to file a patent application with a provisional specification a provisional specification in a very broader sense includes everything not claims so basically when we talked about the anatomy of the patent we said at the end there is a claim section in a provisional specification there is no claim what you are doing is you are trying to cover the scope of the invention in your name saying that this is my invention and my rights start from this day and after this day if there is any publication or if there is any demonstration of the product in a in a, a public setup that is not going to anticipate my patentability so at that stage you file something called a provisional specification the only catch here is that if you file a provisional specification let's say on 26th of april 2024 within a period of 12 months you will have to file a complete specification complete specification i talked about the anatomy you will have to maintain the anatomy of that patent you will have to make to file claims also and if you fail to do that your patent application will be considered abandoned and you will have no rights so within a period of 12 months you are supposed to ensure that you are filing a complete specification now uh, there are different types of patent applications that you can file there is something which is called an ordinary application meaning that you are only filing in india and you are not interested in anywhere now dr madhuri says i want to file in india and us so what i will find do is i'll file in india and within a period of 12 months i'll file a us application so she will get rights if the patent is granted in two countries india and us but dr madhuri again comes back and she says my interest is not just us i want to file in let's say 15 countries now now what happens is if you want to file in 15 countries specifically to be very very honest mostly we start doing pct applications if there is more than five countries in the interest so if she says okay i have these many countries instead of bearing too much fees filing in every local country what we do is we file a pct application and in that application we designate okay these 15 countries are of area of interest and then uh, then when the pct application goes through its life cycle the applications enter into those 15 countries right divisional application is when you file more than one invention in a patent application when the examiner comes back to you he says divide the application so whatever you file subsequently is a divisional application patent of addition is if in your own patent application uh, invention you have done some improvement you can file a patent of addition but the rights are only for 20 years from the initial or the master patent okay now coming to life cycle of the patent so generally when we file a patent if you have filed a uh, uh, complete specification you go to the publication but if you have filed a provisional specification you are supposed to file that complete specification within 12 months from this deadline so if your deadline was 26th april 2024 your complete specification should be filed by 26th april 2025 and once you have filed the complete specification 18 months from this particular date that is 26 april 2024 your patent will get published in the official journal of the patent okay every every 15 days every every week you will see the patent journal and there your application will get published once your application get published uh, you will have to go for examination of your patent and during the examination you will hear from the examiner you will get an examination report 
you will reply to it you will have a hearing before the patent office and during the hearing you will know that whether the patent is accepted or granted if the patent is granted they you are, you will be issued a patent certificate but if the patent is rejected then you can go to the court and appeal the decision of the patent office earlier we had ipab where we used to go for appeal process but now we have to go to the courts to appeal the decision of the controller uh patent pending you must be seeing a lot of places these days where they write patented or patent pending this is a provision wherein if your patent is pending and it is still subject to examination or still is undergoing examination then you can simply write patent pending and you can tell the customer okay on this particular product i as an applicant had applied for a patent and uh, if if you do it in a frivolous way wherein you have not applied the patent then there is a provision of fine so you are not supposed to do it just for the for the sake of you know peer pressure or it's, it looks fancy you are supposed to file a patent and then you are supposed to write patent pending and if the patent has been granted then you can write patented and you can tell the number also now coming to infringement infringement is something when then you uh, deliberately uh, or willfully uh, infringe upon somebody's technology or a product or a process which is covered by a granted patent in this case uh, if somebody says that okay my patent has been infringed the burden falls on the person who is alleging that the patent has been infringed meaning on the patentee for a patent infringement there are only civil remedies available there is no criminal action as such and uh, if a patent has been alleged to have been uh, uh, have been infringed the patentee has to bring a lawsuit within a period of 3 years from infringement otherwise there is a whole lot of case laws with regards to latches and whether the same will be barred by latch or not that is another round of issue so in that case generally you are supposed to keep a watch in the market to see if somebody is infringing upon your patent or not now again coming back and touching upon the base for the patent versus research paper conundrum patenting is something which actually takes some time to give you a right but it gives you a legal right that right is exclusive in nature that right comes for 20 years and the right is negative in nature meaning you can stop people from uh, illegally offering using making selling your invention without your permission it helps you to commercialize your invention they have been instances they have been multiple um you can find multiple uh, uh, proposals in the market where people are selling their patent they have been now startups which actually uh, you know put on their website okay these patents are available to be bought you can go and you know contact them and there is a patent brokerage that has come into picture so this is something which has now come up come up into picture and, and from the academic perspective uh, most of the time now acad uh, acad industries are also collaborating with academics to actually have that portfolio in their in their kitty also and to develop something together um, you will see a lot of i uh, for example if you see iits and its and and most of the research institutions they keep on publishing okay we did this mou with this particular uh, industry and that is all because they are interested in joint collaboration and joint ipr management when it comes to a paper publication there is nothing wrong when it comes to a paper publication the only thing is you don't get much rights the rights if it if it comes into your hand might be a copyright but you do not get any exclusive right in terms of your own invention and you cannot stop somebody else from using what you have invented when you only publish a paper so it is less time consuming and less expensive but the rights are something you are bartering when it comes to a publication so you have to take that into consideration when you decide whether you want to go for a patent or you want to go for a patent plus publication uh, that is all from my end and very thank you for being patient and listening to this session um it's open for question if you want to ask any question here yes any questions No, ma'am. Made my job easy. <laughs> ma'am? Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. 
ma'am uh, as uh, it was a very brief session ma'am actually we understood a lot about patents thank you so much for that and uh, ma'am uh, there is only one question we uh, you spoke about the uh, global filing of uh, patents right like for an example if there is an invention uh, ma'am for an example this moderna case ma'am uh, uh, i mean uh, if if you talk if we if i want to file a patent uh, for an example for a medicine or a, a, a for a pharmaceutical thing how uh, internationally globally how can we go about it ma'am like you explained us but uh, if i'm uh, i mean uh, it is very uh, you know uh, there are a lot of complexities right ma'am yes it uh, is it is complex uh, it comes uh, to medicinal I... patents yes drug patents are a little complex uh the search is also very complex it's not the normal search databases that we use there is something called stn which is used wherein you upload the molecule and use the system runs a search it's a little complex it is expensive also uh there is nothing called a global patent i'm sorry if i i don't think i said that but let me just clarify there is nothing called a global patent patents are territorial in nature if you want rights you have to file in that country what i talked about was a pct application that if you want to file in more than five countries and the expenses of five countries individually is going to be very high you are supposed to file a pct application because it is a single window to file multiple patent applications in multiple countries at one time thank you ma'am yes anyone there is no global patent uh, let me just clarify there is no global patent there is people actually have a lot of uh, at times it becomes a uh, issue basically and i have seen that with inventors also where they assume that they have filed in five country and it seems like a international or a global patent please understand patents are territorial in nature you will get rights for the patent if it is granted in the countries only where you file not anywhere else and it goes the same with the, the other uh, other country people also if they want to yes, sue yes. us for an infringement they should be having the patent rights in this country yes, right yes 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 so that is the thing that at times as a strategy you look at a uh, patent portfolio of a company and you're looking at patents that they have not filed in india and those those technologies are being exploited in india because they they forgot to file or they have not you know seen india as a viable market so these days whenever the viability is being checked uh, as indian attorneys we also tell our international clients that you have to check the market viability in india otherwise you will are going to end up losing the rights so a patent somebody who is holding a patent in us if they have not filed in india they cannot sue you in india thank you ma'am no problem any other questions yes any other questions yeah kalpana thank you very much it's really a elaborative session thank you we are very happy for that uh, so on this occasion of world ip day we also conducted some competitions in the department today so in front of you just i request dr sunita surely gastron professor wants to announce the winners names so kindly please Good morning, Kalpana Ji. Good morning. Program officer, NSS Sargent, Mr. Sivadasi, Kapra Vidyalaya. This occasion of World IPR Day, the department is in the NSS Management. We have conducted electrician competitions on IT and the Sustainable Development Goals, building a common future with the innovation and the creativity. He uh, conducted on this day, that is twenty sixth April, twenty twenty four. The students, uh, number of students have participated, and it was difficult task to choose any three sections. Three. Sivani secured first prize. Um, and consolidate uh, sorry consolidation prize to ten and that is third prize and the next for uh, last student's final year 
Divya Puja has secured first prize and K. Rani secured second prize and Indira Priyadarshini has won third prize. Thank you, Pananda, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Once again, thank you, Kalpana. Now I request Monica to propose formal vote of thanks to ma'am. Monica? May I start, ma'am? Please, ma'am. Knowledge coupled with innovation will create wonders. IPR is one of such wonders. It is the beacon of hope to nurture creative minds, as is evident with today's workshop. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I am Monica by studying BALLB third year. It's my honor to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of Department of Law and Institution Innovation Council to our esteemed guest speaker, Kalpana Gargma, for enriching our minds about the significance of patents in research and its valuable contributions in the field of IP. Ma'am highlighted about the interrelationship between IP and SDGs and gave in-depth knowledge about patents. We are enlightened for diving into the world of IP with your resourceful lecture on patent in research ma'am and are excited to take part in more such sessions. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our university authorities, Professor D. Bharati ma'am, Vice Chancellor, Professor Yan Rajni ma'am, Registrar of SPMBB, Professor C. Vani ma'am, Dean School of Social Sciences, members of Institution Innovation Council for extending their unwavering support. We are forever thankful to our department fraternity, Dr. Yes Madhuri Pardesi, ma'am, head department of law, IPR coordinator, Professor T. Sita Kumari, ma'am, Dr. K. Sunita, ma'am, and Dr. G. Indra Priyadarshini, ma'am, assistant professors, department of law, for organizing such fruitful session and engaging students with wonderful opportunities and providing valuable insights for their overall development. We appreciate the efforts of the technical team for their constant support in the smooth conduct of the workshop. The active participation of research scholars and students of all disciplines made this event a success. I once again thank you all for your valuable time and efforts for making this event a memorable one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kalpana, thank you very much once again. So we want to more sessions, practical sessions from you. We no need problem. collaboration with IIC and Department of Law of Admaut University. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. I thank everybody, especially the technical team who supported us a lot once again. So thank you all. We can leave.